we're going to prove that a convergent sequence must be bounded. I'll leave a couple links in the description to lessons I've done on bounded sequences. The definition is basically exactly what you would expect. The idea behind this proof is pretty straightforward. Let's say we've got some sequence a n that converges to a number, let's say a. Then, by definition of a convergent sequence, we could pick any positive number epsilon that we want. Let's say epsilon equals 1, and it would follow by definition, there exists some natural number big N, so that for all terms of the sequence after the big nth term, we have that those terms of the sequence are within 1 of that limit a. So the absolute value of a n minus the limit a is less than 1. Again, this is just by definition of the sequence a n converging to a. This absolute value inequality is equivalent to writing that negative 1 is less than a n minus a without the absolute value bars, which is less than positive 1. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson proving that this is equivalent to this. It is a very important result. We use it a lot. Then the big idea is we can add a through this inequality to have that a minus 1 is less than a n is less than 1 plus a. In other words, we have a lower bound, a minus 1, and an upper bound, 1 plus a, for all terms of the sequence after the big nth term. We've guaranteed that all terms of the sequence after a certain point are bounded between a minus 1 and 1 plus a. There is only a finite number of terms left in the sequence to account for, so we should be able to adjust our argument to make sure that it works for all terms of the sequence. Let's see how we can finish things up. We might start with a tentative upper bound u of 1 plus a. We know that this is an upper bound for all terms of the sequence after the big nth term. Similarly, we might start with a tentative lower bound of a minus 1 for similar reasons. And again, by definition of a convergent sequence, we are sure that these bounds work for every term of the sequence after the big nth term. So the only terms left that we haven't accounted for are the first big n terms of the sequence, a1, a2, and so on, through a big n. It's possible that one of these numbers is actually bigger than 1 plus a, in which case we could increase our upper bound u accordingly. In order to actually do that, we'll use the maximum function. So an upper bound of 1 plus a might work, but just to guarantee that our upper bound will work for all terms of the sequence, since that's what we actually need to show to show that the sequence is bounded, we'll let our upper bound u be the maximum of all of these numbers. And similarly for L, it might be the case that one of these numbers is less than a minus 1, in which case we could decrease L accordingly to make sure that we still have a lower bound. So we'll let L be the minimum of all of these numbers. And that's it. U is an upper bound on the sequence. It's greater than or equal to every term of the sequence. And L is a lower bound on the sequence. It's less than or equal to every term of the sequence. So we have that L is less than or equal to A N and A N is less than or equal to U for every term of the sequence A N. And let's just recap how we know this inequality holds for every term of our sequence. When n is less than or equal to big N, so we're looking at the big nth term and terms that precede it, well, u is the maximum of a set that contains all of those terms. So certainly, u is greater than or equal to those. Similarly, l is the minimum of a set containing all of those terms. So certainly, l is less than or equal to all of those terms. Remember, the only terms a n with n less than or equal to big N, those are accounted for in these sets, a1 through a big N. On the other hand, for terms of the sequence a n, where n is greater than big N, big N was selected specifically using the definition of a convergent sequence to ensure that all following terms lie between a minus 1 and 1 plus a. 
Since 1 plus a is in this set that u is the maximum of, u is definitely greater than or equal to 1 plus a, and since a minus 1 is in this set that l is the minimum of, l is certainly less than or equal to a minus 1. So for all terms of our sequence a n, whether n is less than or equal to big N or greater than big N, we found an upper bound u and a lower bound l so that a n lies between u and l. And so our sequence is bounded. Thus, we've proven that a convergent sequence must be bounded. Mm -hmm.